Welcome back to Ryan Flies, an episode where we're doing things a little bit differently, and I start out with some glory shots of what I've been up to in the past few weeks. Why give up the goods right at the beginning? Well, I'm sort of bribing you into watching this whole thing, because I want to warn you, it gets rough at times. I figured I'd not only prove that I do make it through, I also make some forward progress. Now bear with me, some of the filming is a little bit spotty or altogether non-existent. I have quite frankly hit my limit on some of these portions of the build and not been able to set up shooting. Not only that, my sound equipment seems to be on the fritz, so I've lost audio for a lot of this as well. But we're going to make do, and I'm going to present to you everything that I've been up to in the last three or so weeks on the RV7A. So buckle up for an exhausting emotional roller coaster. It's stupid. Who comes up with this This time on Ryan Flies. I'm currently just trying to find ways to delay punching some very large holes in this firewall but and I mean I've got to do it so I just don't want them in the wrong spot either have to be brave or stupid to get this done and I'm in the awkward position to for once in my life be grateful I have the ladder going for me. Punching the holes for the control cable firewall penetrations meant drilling a hole and upsizing to three quarter inch with a step drill then utilizing this well relatively cheap sheet metal punch to create a final size hole at 1.25 inches. To, keep, to catch you up uh, on where we're at, um, not much has gone right off camera, so it's probably lucky that I haven't been filming. I've got three large holes in the firewall, two of which may actually be in the right spot. Um, a third, I'm not real sure about. In all seriousness, I've been trying to get my control cables through the firewall. Uh, governor, relatively successful, though I have to disassemble everything um, because I forgot a little rubber boot that needs to go on there. So that'll take another two hours of swearing with my hand back behind this thing to get that fixed. Uh, throttle, we're good. I like how it's working. Um, the throws are correct uh, and, and we were able to, to get that one in. Uh, over the course of a couple hours. Mixture has been a bit of a problem. Um, the hole is there. I think the hole is going to work. Unfortunately, the cable is not going to work. Uh, I have a 50 and one half inch cable, which would be typical for this install, except my motor is not typical. Now, it might have even worked for this motor, except earlier on, I decided to rotate my fuel servo in order to have more advantageous runs on most lines. The exception apparently being the mixture cable. And even though it's a really straight shot, the geometry means I actually need more of a 54 inch cable, which just so happens to be out of stock at Vans. <sighs> They're out. I, call, I talked to someone. Uh, it's out until August, so I went ahead and ordered it from Spruce. Um, a custom made one and then later found out that that had a six week lead time so they were nice enough to help me cancel that order moments after I placed it um, and I'm back to square one of not having a mixture cable but wanting desperately to get this part done. Uh, completely off camera uh, I moved on to the oil door and that actually went relatively well. I like how it's come out. It does need um, a little bit of fairing just to, to get it to blend a little nicer with the cowling, but that by and large a success. Um, I did take a little bit of footage on my phone, um, though I really just needed to grind away before I left state for a work trip and, and again, didn't have it in me to, to do the whole this thing. Needing a win, I thought I would go ahead and address um, another aspect of this engine that throws a little bit of a curveball, and that 
it also relates to the mixture arm. It touches the bottom cowl. There's a little bit of rubbing and it's not uncommon to need to put in a little blister. And I figured a blister is one thing and I've seen some people kind of just do a little almost eggshell shaped um, bubble on the bottom of the, the cowl and, and, and get it to work. But of course I had to complicate everything. I went ahead and designed in, in CAD a nice looking symmetrical uh, relief on the bottom of the cowl. It almost looks like a little bit of a scoop. In fact, I've been calling it that. My thought is I would, I would mill it on uh, my little milling machine and then glass over that and get it integrated into the cowl. The milling machine, <laughs> per usual, turned into a freaking nightmare, only mainly due to dust collection or lack thereof. It was, it just demolished the garage and everything in it. Eventually, I realized I have this paint booth that works relatively well at condensing or containing uh, messes, and so I went in there. And it did do just that, um, though I was stuck in there with it. I had to sit there and, and remove the dust from the tracks of the milling machine or else it would clog up and skip. And so twice that happened and I had to start over. Um, and even the final piece that I got towards the end started to fall apart on me because again, that, that dust was just everywhere. Um, for further review, I don't think much of the dust actually made it out of the booth at all. Uh, this went about as well as everything else lately. Um, it was going well and then right towards the end it started to fall apart. However, I, I think it's close enough. I can sand what I need out of this um, and get it to fit the cowl. I think it'll be okay. It, it's rough. It's going to take more work than I anticipated, but I don't want to start over. It's gonna work. Um, I've got it over here. I've covered it in epoxy. I've sanded it down. It looks wonderful, I believe. I think it's really gonna do wonders and, and m look like a much more purposeful um, way to address this relief needed in the bottom of the cowl, but I won't start that up again until tomorrow once that epoxy dries. As you can see, I'm back to baffling, which is where I honestly want to be, um, and seeing if I can get this snorkel to fit and what's next there. While I still have uh, a little bit left on the cowl outside of the blister or scoop or whatever we're going to wind up calling that thing, um, I did want to take a short break to, to get some of this hammered out. I would love to start checking things off the list. Unfortunately, the last three, four, five days on the project have been nothing but headaches. My regulator on my air compressor has exploded at probably the worst time, and so I'm stuck using this little guy while I wait for a new regulator. and. It's just been a lot. The last week has just been absolutely rough, demoralizing at times. And you wind up spending two hours fighting it because some asshole decided to invent the Adele clamp. Uh, when nothing works and you're just beating the ever-living piss out of your body and your emotions trying to get this thing done and nothing goes right. Anyways. Uh, that is that. That is where we're at. Let's get back to it uh, soon here. I'm going to pick up where we left off long ago uh, with the baffles and the snorkel uh, now that we have a cowl that fits and see if we can once again try to tackle this thing. Wish me luck. It's been all day at this and I feel like I'm making progress but it doesn't really look like it. There's a lot of fabrication um, and a lot of deviation from the instructions which I don't know how I feel about but I've checked some other blogs and a lot of people are doing the same exact thing that I'm doing. 
So there's that. So far things seem to be fitting well. Um, in fact, I don't think that I have any concerns with this being cut too short. It looks like it's going to be about perfect, which is great. No modifying the snorkel, thank goodness. Well, yet. Yeah. We're not out of the woods yet. Plenty of time for me to screw something up, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll find a way. I'm going to start by hacking on this flange, getting it cut to shape, getting the holes drilled so that I can actually bolt it here. Uh, that way I'm a little more confident in its position and therefore starting to drill Clico holes in this air box getup that I got going on here. Let's, uh, let's, let's get to it. A few notes before I get back to work on this and we cut this one off. My friends at Kit Flight are having a sale. The Week of Air Venture, an app that is normally $34.99, will be on sale for $19.99. If you've been on the fence, I urge you, take a look. Definitely worth it. This is not a paid sponsorship. It's me uh, just genuinely promoting an app that I think is fantastic, created by an individual who I really admire. Second note here, I appreciate everybody sticking around for this one. Uh, the work getting tough at times, and I expect that to continue probably until we get this thing out of the garage. But I am determined to do just that. So from time to time, uh, we may have more of the format like you've seen today with a little less detail. It's just something that I'm going to have to do moving forward in order to hit my goal of getting this thing in the air, at least in the next couple years. However, if you want to stick around for that goal, I urge you to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and uh, share this video with a friend. I would really appreciate it. Until next time, I want to again thank everyone out there for all of the kind words that you've shared, and we'll catch you next time on Ryan Fleiss.